Fifth Hour Radio Show. Dina, growing up exposed to music the way you were, and this might be a no-brainer, but how much did that influence you to want to become a performer, you know, a singer-songwriter yourself? I think it was probably foundationally everything, you know, from just my mom being pregnant with me and being around music all the time and having, she sang in church, she had a beautiful voice, my mom has a beautiful voice, so she was kind of behind the scenes singer, you know, and I'm sure being in the womb with her and hearing all those hymns and church songs and, and her voice was beautiful. So that was, I mean, that sounds kind of silly, but I mean, I really think that had a lot to do with it. And then being with my, you know, my dad and he was always playing the guitar and always working with super high integrity artists, you know, writer artists, people that really paved the road in music and, um, so I definitely think that had a lot to do with it. It was just kind of the norm for us. You growing up in the music business, and, and it was everything. You know, it was the conversation around the dinner table and and how record labels ran and managers and lawyers and, and touring and studio discs and records and singles and how records were made. And I mean, it really was part. And he had a record label when I was young. So, I mean, just growing up in it, that thick, it's, pretty hard to get around it you know mm -hmm. you know but being on the safe side you also made the smart decision to go to college did you ever use your degree and work professionally in the field you majored in well i did the internship and uh i was a count a therapist for stroke and head injury patients and i love i still to this day love to read i mean i'm like my own health project, I take different kinds of vitamins and this and that, and I'm way into physical health and uh, longevity of life and experimenting with um, different vitamins and, you know, collagen. And as I'm getting older, it's been getting way more interesting. I'm, I'm clawing at new things, but try to be young and healthy as long as I can. So, the, the, Kango, so the Kango water system. I know the canyon water. I adore my water machine, and I swear <laughs> it makes such a big difference. So, um, anyway, yeah, I think the medical field, you know, I would have loved to have been a doctor. I would have let my cousin, Jimmy, is a doctor, and I'm so jealous because, you know, he stuck with it and studied and was way more disciplined than I was, um, and he's very successful So in Louisiana. So, I would love to have been a doctor. And so I still just pay attention, you know, mm -hmm. I, I like that. But, you know, I have to say my dad was probably the only parent in existence that was um, like, what are you doing? Why are you wasting your four years on college, my Lord? It's just <laughs> you know? The only parent in existence to say that. <laughs> I mean, he primarily, he was just like, oh, my gosh, we can get so much done. You're 18. What? Oh, you know. <laughs> So what brought you back into music? What, you know, what was that break that got you noticed that put you into the spotlight? Well, ironically, with my patients, I would use music. You know, I would take these hours or moves into uh, some sessions and in group time and put on Elvis things. You know, my stroke patients were usually older. The head injury patients were usually younger, motorcyclists and things like that. So um, with the stroke patients, I would... Uh, get them going with like Elvis or something from their era and combine some of the things from my era that I loved and it, I really saw responses from them with that which was exciting and and that just so I incorporated music into that that was like the seed that was planted for me being the effect that it had on people um, in a good healing kind of way and then I realized you know Seeing people also die and having patients that didn't get better and just seeing that side of it, it was really hard for me to see that every day in my life for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. So I pretty much just 
I honestly lost the patient that I've adored and just came in one morning and you have all these plans and things for for your people and she would have died and her bed was cleanly made and they were bringing someone else in and it was just like, oh Mm, no, what happened to her? You know, I was so attached and boy, it just tore me up and uh, I wasn't there when it happened. You know, it was just so cut and dry but I decided I couldn't do it. I came home crying but mm. I can't do this. Yeah. Yes. And so I just started honestly waiting tables. I had school loans to pay and responsibilities and I just started waiting tables and playing and writing songs throughout kind of that process of life and also being young in my twenties and going through relationships and things and um just writing about it all and putting it out there in open mic night around town in Nashville and writers nights and started getting some decent responses. You know, people were like, oh my gosh, I've been through that. I've been through that. And that's, that's really how it started. So what was it like in 94? You know, you were the only female solo artist at Farm Age 7, I believe. And this was a couple years before your debut album uh, was released. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh, <laughs> the pictures. When you go back and see the pictures, it is horrifying. I was, I was terrified. I was on that stage with... Because Willie Nelson had heard my tape, heard my demo tape, a cassette tape um, from our mutual friend at Capitol, and he freaked out because he'd worked with my dad, and they had, you know, seen me grow up with Chris Jopperson as well, and they were on the bill, and they were hanging out in the bus, but before him, Willie just said, you ought to come play Farm Aid, and it was like, oh yeah, right, sure, I'll go, and we said, no, I- I'm serious, you should come play Farm Aid, and so I made my way down there and um, just stood there on the stage with Chip Chuck Jones, a co-writer of mine, for a couple of years at that time. And we played. And, uh, oh, my gosh, it was just, it was such an amazing experience, you know. And I was the only girl I had no idea at the time, which was pretty apropos because I've got brothers and I'm, you know, always hung out with guys and stuff growing up and being one of the guys and, so anyway, it just was a great experience, and Chris Robertson took me to the press tent afterwards, and he was so, he just set me up on the table, uh, kind of above him, and he just said, I want you guys to, I don't want to answer any questions, I want you to focus on this girl, because she's going to be the next big thing. It was so sweet. Yeah, yeah, and, it had to be an amazing experience. Oh, it was amazing, and uh, anyway, he's a lovely such a sweetheart, both of those guys. Two years later, your first album drops, blows up. It's huge. Everybody knows who Dina Carter is now. Was it tough to adjust to what fame brings into one's life? It was strange because I felt like, you know, I had been around it, but I had, you know, I've always been Dina Carter since kindergarten, so the name was nothing new to me or my family or, you know, to see it kind of blow up into becoming a brand, I guess, was cuckoo. I mean, that was just, honestly, that was just like... You know, because I, I, was, I, was, I was wondering, because, you know, you, you had grown up in, in that type of environment, and now you're in the spotlight. I just didn't know how you would adjust to that. How does one adjust to being in the spotlight like that, all of a sudden, too? It was kind of, it was very interesting, just because I think the hard part was, you know, some of my extended family was more, you know, I, these are people I've been around my whole life, with grandparents and uh, at my grandparents' house and stuff like that. And it wasn't even my immediate family, but some of the spouses of my extended family, I guess, were way, you know, in, impressed with what I'd done. And it, it took me aback, but it, it really did because, I had been with these people since, you know, I was from birth till now. And Mm -hmm. the fact that they saw me in a different light was kind of like, oh, no, you know. (laughs) Oh, no. I'm still the same person. (laughs) I know. But at the same time, it didn't change me at all because I had been around it. So I was able to, I mean, just besides being exhausted and worked to death and kind of glazed over there for a couple of years, I was able to really stay myself and stay connected to my roots and so it didn't swing me too far and the pendulum the other way. Yeah. You know, where I got 
cocky and bitchy and like diva stuff going on. That never happened. Um, other than just like, oh my gosh, can we please have a real toilet at the show tonight? <laughs> uh, or, or, you know, a real shower, a real bathroom. That's all I, mean. I want is a real toilet. I know. I just want a real shower. No porta potties, please. Um, so, you know, I mean, it's a learning curve for sure. I'm, I made a lot of mistakes too and just not knowing how things work. Because I wasn't the one in the spotlight, I'd watched it, but you just are going to have get your sea legs under you and take a little time. Yeah. You know. Let's fast forward to the present. You got a new album coming out. It's coming out on December 2nd, Cyber Monday, right? Right. Oh, okay. It's been yeah. six years now since your last album. How, how excited are you to be releasing some new material? I'm so excited. I'm so excited for so many reasons. You know, number one, because I kind of, I faded into the background because I had a child to raise and in Los Angeles and as a single parent at the time and I really needed to focus on that. And so I thought that it was over for me kind of that regard, you know. Mm -hmm. I thought that maybe I was done, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I thought that I had... uh, I was just done. I thought, well, maybe now I have a different goal. You know, that was amazing. If that was it, I mean, I'll take it. That was so great. So I started focusing back on my songwriting um, and doing, I did some touring and stuff here and there, but it was really focused on raising haze. Yeah. And, um, you know, and so. Just being a mommy. Yeah, being a mom and being available, you know, being Mm -hmm. at his little. Um, shows that he did, if he had to sing one line as a frog in a play or something. I mean, I wanted to be there for that, and I didn't want to miss any of that stuff. And I still don't, but now he's nine, and he's a little bit older. And yeah. Um, So, yes, I'm very excited. It's, I was songwriting. I started producing some other artists, you know, mentoring young artists that were coming in to write with me and stuff. And, and that was really fulfilling and cool. Um, and it's kind of led me in this direction of blogging now about my experiences and trying to help people learn or live through what I've lived through in a way. But to have a new record to support all that is just unbelievably exciting. But to have it on my own label, I guess, is the other long-winded answer. <laughs> oh, yeah, you started your own label, Little Nugget. Yeah, Little Nugget, because my dad's record label when I was little was Nugget Records. And so I figured, you know, I would just bring back Nugget and re-trademark his logo and everything and do Little Nugget. Um, and Sony has partnered with me to distribute um, with Red River Entertainment. And we're excited. I mean, it's a new frontier for us because I've always had a major label. I've always had somebody else paying the bills, and I've paid them back, you know. And, and uh, so this has been... And I thank God for Kenny Chesney setting you and Tequila. Oh, yeah. Big, huge song. Much, huge, I beautiful. Know. Great, great thank song, you. Dina. Thank you. So it's exciting, all of it. How much of your personal life and experience is in the in the music on this album? Oh, my gosh. I mean, all of it. Just like all the records I've been through. I think my second record, I still adore that album. And, you know pushing boundaries a little bit creatively. I've always, not done that intentionally, but it's just not wanting to be like sitting in a mold, you know. Um, but the second record, I feel like I was so busy on the road. I was writing songs, but it was more about just looking back on experiences as opposed to being in the experiences mm-hmm. at the time. And so my first record was more in those experiences because I wrote for four years. You know, while I was in them, yeah, mm-hmm. and got to pick, pick pick the cream of the crop along with a couple of outside ones that I love. So the second one, I feel like really, I guess just suffered the that what they say, you know, the sophomore thing of being so busy and having so much success that it was hard to match the um, authenticity of the experiences that I've been through. Mm-hmm. Um, so this record, I mean. And every record, you know, since then, I did a song, a record called 
story in my life. Those were very real and what I would train these things to Nashville, LA, and um, yada, yada. So, but this record, I have been through, you know, a divorce. I've been through a single mom life. Um, I've been through you now a second marriage and struggling through a blended family. And that's all You've nice. been through a, a bad car wreck? Didn't even know if you'd be singing again, right? Yes. Mm. Which, you know, I hadn't really talked about at all, but I'm kind of starting to talk about that because that's really, these things happen. Yeah. I, life I, happens, I you well, know, life happens to everybody. And life happens. I lost my dad, and that was devastating. So, A, I thought I was just never going to make records again. Then I was in a car accident, which totally, you know, jacked my neck and everything, and I had to go in and move around my vocal box and work on my spine, and I didn't know if I'd ever sing again for real. And then my son said to me, finally, he just said, Mom, I've been praying about this because I just felt like, you know, maybe I was taken out of the picture. And, and my son, he said, Mama, when are you going to get on stage and sing again? <laughs> and, and that really motivated me to say, well, you know what, maybe I'm not done. So we got this record and got it all together, and, and that's where we're at. So what about websites and social media? Where can people go and, and get information about you and the album and, and what you're up to? Man. There is so much information about me, you're going to get a cavity over me. <laughs> I mean, you just, like, who cares? Um, Dina, if you go to Dina.com, and it's one N, some people put two N's in my name, but it's like Dean Martin with an A on the end. Mm-hmm. You just go to Dina.com, and there's all kinds of updates, and we have all of our links, and Twitter, and Facebook, and Pinterest, and YouTube channel, and all that stuff, those little icons at the top that can, you know, direct you wherever you want to go. But um, there's song by song updates on this new record, video interviews about the songs. You can hear little snippets of the music, um, all kinds of stuff. And we're wrapping up a video this week. And, and will there be a tour associated with this release? There will be. We're doing some shows. I'm going to be in New York for release week doing the CMA Songwriter Series, which is exciting. Um, and I've done a couple of in-the-rounds and, and, you know, smaller kind of things. I did a couple of shows this year. And we're looking definitely at putting some things together for next year for the support of the physical release. Because Monday, Cyber Monday is a digital download day. Yep. And we want twenty. Yeah, we want our goal is twenty five thousand downloads, which is not a huge number, but I think you're going to get that. 000. I think you're going to get that pretty easy. I think. Oh gosh, well I hope so because you know I just that is kind of the marker to decide if if they'll put me in the stores again and mm-hmm. if they'll do this and that. You know, well, if they're if, smart, you know, they will. <laughs> you know. Well. You know what? If they don't, I totally understand. But I'm gonna give it all I've got and and do the best job I can and be as honest and real and excited about you know God kind of carrying me through the desert time. I mean, He carries me through everything, but this is really an exciting time because I just feel like you know He's doing some interesting things and special things. So I'm excited. Well, Dina, thank you very much for taking time out of your day and joining uh, us on the show. It was our pleasure. Thank you. My goodness. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm, I, I bet you are. I, 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 being back out on the road, uh, you know, doing things you're doing, I, you know, after so long of an absence, I bet you're excited. I'm happy for you. You know what? You never appreciate something until it's taken away from you. And when it's put back in your grasp, like in your reach, you would, you just, you're so grateful. So that's where I'm at. So well, I'm grateful. Well, Dina, enjoy the rest of your day. And good luck with the album. Good luck with your future. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. God bless you. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks. You have a good day. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Radio Show. Show.